So this is the continuation of our balance worksheet on the back side. I'm going to walk you through how to do the rest of these if you'd like. So let's continue. The first thing is I have to, and I think it's very helpful to separate your ions if you have them. And in this case, I see that I have H3 and PO4, and I'm going to separate them right down the middle. I know this PO4 is a phosphate ion. I know this H is a plus ion. So I'm separating my positives from my negatives. Barium's an element that's positive. My hydroxides are negative. Now, what we should do, and I think it's really good practice, if you write the exact charges. Now, if you didn't know that hydrogen likes to become plus one, then you could look that up into your reference table. Phosphate, you may not know, is negative three. And where I look, because what the heck is a phosphate? I go to my periodic, I go to my reference table E. And there it is. PO4 negative 3. I know the front ones are positive. The ones at the end, the caboose here, is negative. We found the phosphate to be negative 3, but what is this OH cluster? It's another cluster, another polyatomic ion. If I don't know the charge, I go to table, what the heck is that, called table E. And there is the hydroxide, the OH minus. It's negative 1 for this entire cluster, for this polyatomic ion. And as I continue on, it's negative one apiece. My barium, well, what charge is it? Well, if you think with me, there's two of these clusters. Each one's negative one, so this thing has to be plus two. If you're not sure, where could we look? Periodic table and barium is plus two. This little charge, oxidation, shows you. And at this point, I'm not going to do any more of these. You should know where to look to find out the charges. Just be aware. Sometimes we're going to run to scenarios that have more than one charge, and you have to figure out which one we're using. So now that we know that we, uh, barium is plus two, each hydroxide is never negative one, we're going to double replace. I'm going to make the, this positive hook up with this negative. Right? I can only do positives and negatives because they won't attract otherwise. So I'm going to take 1H. It is not H3. Don't fall in love with the idea that it's H3 plus 1. How does that work? I know that 1H can bond with another H using Lewis dot diagrams. This does not exist. You have to fall in love with the idea that these are individual ions. You have three H pluses. So you're going to take just one of them. We don't know how many we need yet until we balance. Right? The balancing is going to tell us how much we need. So just take one of them. So take an H. I'm going to put it over here. And I know one of them is positive one. That's what I have up here. And it's going to hook up with one of these hydroxides. It is not this. Do not do this. It's not H2 negative one. Each hydroxide, my friends, each cluster of OH is negative one. So I'm going to just bring one of them to the table. Okay, so I got negative one plus one. We're going to crisscross. You need one of each if you don't see that to make this work. And this makes H. 2O or HOH. It's really helpful to keep the H with the OH. And I'll explain why. So if you're making water, it's really helpful to put an H in front of the OH. I know it's really H2O. It's really helpful to keep it like this so you see the polyatomic ion. Okay, so we did the H and the OH. Now we have the barium and the PO4. All right, now the barium is positive, so it goes in front, and I know it's plus 2. And I'm using my charges to build the correct chemical formula. And I have my phosphate, which is negative 3. And I'm going to crisscross this. And I need three bariums for every two phosphates. So get rid of my charges, put them away, as we said before. And we need three bariums for every how many phosphates? I have it written there, two. To show two phosphates, you need the parentheses. Yes. And now we're ready. Notice we don't have BA3 over here. We need three barium ions that are plus two apiece to hook up with what? Two phosphates that are negative six apiece so that each chemical is electrically neutral. That's what we do when we do formula writing. All right, so let's balance, okay? And we'll use black here. So I've got three H's over here. And I have, well, two H's. But you know what? It's very helpful to keep the polyatomic ions together. Notice that this is a hydroxide ion. So what I'm going to do is I'm not, I'm not going to try to balance by individual elements. 
I'm going to balance by using my polyatomic ions. It makes it simple, but just watch how I do this. Right now, I have one phosphate. I'm going to keep the H's by themselves. I'm not going to work with that first because I know there's an H in the polyatomic ion, and there's an H outside of it, so it kind of muddles the, the, the scenarios a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just deal with the hydroxides first. Let's do that. So I have two hydroxides on this side. Whoa, I only have one hydroxide on this side. That's why I, that's why I kept it HOH. So to balance that, I throw a 2 here. That gives me two hydroxides. Okay. Now I have three bariums here. Okay, well I have one barium here, so I can only put coefficients in front. So I put three there. Wait a minute, what does that do? That makes 3 times 2 is how many hydroxides, right? We're going to distribute the 3. 3 times 1 barium is 3 bariums. But now we have 3 times 2, there's 6 hydroxides. I need 6 hydroxides. But I only put a 2 here. Well, there's going to become a point in time where you're going to have to erase some time. This is a puzzle. It's not going to come out exactly the way that you first write it sometimes. So I cross out the 2 and I put in the 6. Clearly, I need six of these to balance my, balance my bariums. Okay. Now, notice something. I have two phosphates, three bariums. The bariums are canceled, or balanced, I should say. The phosphates have two apiece. I only have one here, so I have to put a two here. That gives me two phosphates. I have the phosphates. Remember, it's easier to balance if you keep the polyatomic ions, these clusters from table E together. All right. Last thing, we're going to check the H's, but we're checking the H's that come that are not in a hydroxide. See, these H's are part of the hydroxide. We have six hydroxides, six hydroxides, but we have what? Two times three? Six additional H's outside the hydroxide, and hello, that's where they are. We have six hydroxides here, and then, I'm sorry, six H's here, and then of course six hydroxides. Remember, it's a polyatomic ion, and it's a distributed property. So I get the six H's by putting the six here, and it's already here, and everything is balanced. I have six H's outside of a hydroxide. I have six hydroxides. I have six hydroxides here, three bariums, three bariums, and I'm balanced. Put the one there if you'd like. Type of reaction is definitely double replacement. Okay, number nine. I don't have a positive and negative side here, so this one does. So I can't double replace, I can only single replace. So this is a single replacement reaction. So the aluminum is going to replace the copper. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have uh, aluminum hooking up with the chlorine. Now I do not write Cl2. It's not Cl2 gas bonded to each other. It's two chloride ions in an ionic compound. So I'm just going to write the individual ion. I'll figure out how many I need when I balance. So each chlorine is negative one. I know that from the reference table. Each aluminum is plus three. You should know where to look. We're going to crisscross these guys. And clearly I need, what, one aluminum for three chlorines. Get rid of my ions. Put them away. Aluminum with the chlorine AlCl3. What else do I have left? Well, we're going to kick out the copper. Copper's by itself. All right, and now we're ready to balance. Oh, okay. I don't know why I just said that. I said, oh, okay. So in any case, i got one aluminum. I've got one aluminum. So far, so good. I've got one copper. I've got one copper. Pretty simple. I've got two chlorine ions. I have ooh, three chlorine ions. Hmm, a two to three scenario. What do I do? I find a common factor or a least common number between them. And six, six is a number that both go in. So to make six chlorines on this side, I put a two. To make six chlorines on this side, ions, I put a three. Now, if you notice something, what that winds up doing is unbalancing my copper over here. So I have three coppers. I put a three there. I have two aluminums. Oh, it's, I need two aluminums, two here. And I have the same number, same type of atom on both sides. That's the law of conservation of matter. That gives me good cake if I wanted to do this reaction. By the way, you will be doing this reaction in a lab shortly. Type of reaction, single replacement. Okay, next one, number 10. 
looking at it carefully, as opposed to not carefully, we can see that CL, can I split that in half? Uh, well, I can split it, not really. You can't really do that. It's an element, simplest form of matter. I mean, you could split into two chlorine uh, atoms, but no. This, of course, can be split into a plus or a negative side. So that is something we can talk about. So since this is one element, just like aluminum was, you're going to see it single replace with this compound. Now, careful with this. Okay, let me just draw this better. This is splitting this guy. Good. And I put a positive here. Positive 1 for sodium. If you don't know where that is, you look in the reference table. This is negative 1. Now, the chlorine is going to replace something and kick something out. Who is it going to replace? Well, you may, in the last problem, we saw aluminum kick out the copper. Now, why? Aluminum likes to become positive. So it's going to replace the positive already there. But wait a minute. This is a nonmetal. Nonmetals like to become what? They like to become negative because they absorb electrons because they're so electronegative and small. So this is not going to replace the metal. Because if it did, you'd have a Cl negative trying to what? Bond with an I negative. And I don't know how to do that. That doesn't exist in nature. So we're going to have to what? Replace the what? The nonmetal. The metal replaced the metal. The nonmetal replaces the nonmetal. So the chlorine is going to kick out the iodine. We're left with sodium plus one. We're going to make this into chlorine negative one. It's going to become a negative one. So you get negative one. You're going to kick the iodine out, just like we kicked the what? The copper out, the iodine gets kicked out, and it becomes I no charge. The element that gets kicked out is just the element. But remember who our Hofbrinkles are, and iodine is one of them. So it's going to be what? I2. It's something you have to remember. And of course, NaCl is going to bond into a one-to-one -one ratio for the salt crystal for the millionth and one time. So NaCl. And now we can balance. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Let's balance a little hearts away. Okay. So two chlorines, one chlorine, throw a two here. Two sodiums, two sodiums. This gives me two iodides. And I have them there for balance. You put a one there if you'd like. Be my host. This is single replacement. Number 11. We're going to move a little faster now. Because I want to. Number 11 I split this down the middle. Ammonium ion, what the heck is that? Is plus one. This is the negative, but if I check it out on the what the heck is that table, this is the dichromate ion. It is negative two. The next one, well, the cobalt's going to be positive something. Sulfate is going to be negative two from table. What the heck is that? But cobalt, if you look at the reference table, it can be plus. 2 or plus 3, and there it is. It's plus 2 or plus 3, so I don't know which one I have, so I have to look at the chemical formula as written to figure that out. How do I do that? Well, if each sulfate is negative 2, and there's three of them, the overall charge due to all my negatives is negative 6. These things have to equal 0, so what charge do I need for all my positives? Positive 6. But if there's two cobalts there, for a total of plus 6, each one is plus 3. Now, if you didn't like everything I just did there, another thing you could have done is say, hey, the 3 is here. It came from up here, if you, if you do crisscross. So knowing that and double replacing, I have this positive ammonium hooking up with this negative sulfate. So here's an ammonium. Individually, it's plus 1. We'll figure out how many we need by building the reaction. We have the sulfate is negative 2. Crisscross, get rid of your ions, put them away. I don't want to see your ions. Okay, this goes to two, and because we have two of these, therefore there's that. Next up, we have a cobalt plus three hooking up with the dichromate. Cobalt is plus three, and now we have the dichromate as Cr2O7. Each one is negative two. Crisscross, you need two cobalt, cobalts for every three dichromates. Get rid of your ions. Get them out of there. Okay, so we need two of these cobalts. Uh, don't need parentheses for my cobalts. Two cobalts for every 
three dichromates. And now we wrote correct chemical formulas. If you do not write correct chemical formulas, what's going to happen to you is that you're going to have a tough time balancing. It's almost impossible to balance a chemical formula with the wrong chemical formulas. You'll find that out to be uh, true. All right. So uh, keep our polyatomic ions together. Two ammonium ions, two ammonium ions. One dichromate ion, three dichromates. So I'm going to put a three in front to balance my dichromates. Three times two, distributing the three, I've got six ammoniums. Well, I got two here. How do I get six? Or three in front. But by distributing the three, now I have three sulfates. Looky here, I have three sulfates. I have two cobalts. I am balanced. All right. Next one is just the chemical words we'll start with. Copper two, hydrogen sulfate. Split that down the middle. Copper is what charge? Hey, they're telling me it's plus two because there is two choices. This is going to be the plus two one. Hydrogen sulfate, what the heck is that? It's HSO4. It's negative one. Zinc acetate. Zinc is plus two from the periodic table. Acetate is C2H3O2, negative one apiece. So let's do the words. Copper is going to hook up with the acetate. So we'll do copper. Now you have to say the two because copper has two choices. Acetate plus zinc is the positive one, right? That's the one that goes in front. So zinc hooks up with the hydrogen sulfate. I guess I didn't give you enough room. Feel bad about it. I do. Now you're going to write the formulas. Copper, hydrogen, sulfate. Copper is plus two. So it's Cu. HSO4 is negative one apiece. So you should realize by crisscrossing HSO4. Oops. I'm going to need what? Two of those. Zinc acetate. Each zinc is plus one. Plus two, I'm sorry. Each zinc uh, acetate is negative one. So crisscross. So one zinc, this is a two. You need two acetates, C2, H3O2, put a two there. And now we're going to double replace our hearts away. The copper is going to hook up. The positive copper is going to hook up with the negative acetate. Copper is what? Plus two. Each acetate is minus one. So you should be able to see at this point that we need two of the acetates for every one copper to make this electrically neutral. Last up, one last one, we have the zinc, which is positive, hooking up with the hydrogen carbonate, like we said here. Zinc is plus two. Hydrogen, I should say hydrogen sulfate, sorry. Hydrogen sulfate, HSO4, is negative one. Crisscross, then we need one zinc carbonate to two, to two hydrogen carbonates, hydrogen sulfates. So it's a two there. Let's balance. One copper, one copper, two hydrogen sulfates, two hydrogen sulfates, one zinc, one zinc, two acetates, two acetates. Everything just so happens to be balanced. If it's not, you wrote your what? Chemical formulas incorrectly. Hope that helped. Certainly look at the key without my voice if you'd like. But we're, the, we're done with this ditto. Rock on.